our tool, the only way to use it is to read voltage and push the button. And when you push the button, the voltage either stays up or drops. Now, okay. as a quick example here, let me give you a quick example. Here's what it looks like if it's right. Uh -huh. All right. The button on the top actually applies a load to the circuit. So when you take the load out, you take the, the light bulb, the coil, the motor, the whatever, you pull it out, you're going to read open circuit voltage, which is useless. The manufacturers don't really account for that. So you put the tool in, you read system voltage, and you push the button and notice that the voltage stays essentially normal. Uh -huh. Well, this is the same thing as a battery load tester, but it's for a wire instead. So when you use a battery load tester, you want to see 13 volts, and then when you push it and load it, you want to see 13 volts. Uh -huh. Same rule here. If you see 13 volts at a connector, you want it to stay 13 volts under load. So every time I'm pushing this button, I'm loading the circuit, and notice that the voltage is remaining essentially constant. Okay. But now watch. Here's a resistance. This is uh, 2,700, uh, 2700 ohms. Uh -huh. If I put this in, okay, okay. notice if I can make this work here. Kind of going on a fly. But if I stick this in, Notice I'll still read full system voltage through almost 25,000 ohms. Uh -huh. But watch what happens when I load the circuit under these conditions. Okay, voltage sure. falls on it, but yep. okay. So you know, I, every tool has its limitations. Our tool has limitations. Every tool has limitations. But what we do that we think we do better is that we actually use manufacturer's instructions. We use a voltmeter, we read voltage,